morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of worship here at St. Luke's Camden East. Welcome also to our uh, viewers online who are joining us this morning once again. It is the third Sunday in the season of Easter. Let's begin our service. I'm getting there now. I did it on the wrong page. <laughs> Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures. Make our hearts burn within us while you speak. The, the first hymn is uh, 631, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy. Service begins on page 185 of the Book of Alternative Services. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts are open, all, all desires known, and from you no secrets, secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and wordedly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect of the Day is found on page 338. And together, O oh God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open your eyes of your faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 12. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rules. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm number four, found on page 707 in the BAS 707. We'll read verses one to eight responsibly at the Aster. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon all. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lay down in peace, at once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me drill in safety. And together, faithful defender, do not let our hearts be troubled but fill us with such confidence and joy that we may sleep in peace and rise in the light 
through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sins is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has, ever, has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We should have at this point the uh, gradual hymn which is number 558, 558.
knowledge. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know how many of you saw the eclipse on Monday. It was described by many people, uh, both that I heard on the media and elsewhere, as a spiritual experience. And uh, I saw it myself, and I can definitely say it was, uh, for me also, a kind of spiritual experience. There was a moment of awe when the sun was finally fully eclipsed by the moon and it was officially announced that it was now safe to view it with the naked eye because the sun was entirely obscured and all you could see was the corona around it and the hush came over the crowd. I was at Lemoyne Point and even the birds went quiet because they thought it was time to go to sleep. The blinking red lights on top of the wind turbines on Amherst Island came on to flash uh, their red lights as they normally would do when it's night because they are photosensitive. They come on whenever there's a certain level of darkness. And they stayed on for the whole five minutes of the totality. And there was a certain quality of light in and around the sun, between the, the sun and the clouds that were kind of surrounding the sun. Uh, a certain quality of light that's it's, it's hard to describe. Um, I, I found where I was, uh, there was a, I don't know, a kind of bluish but sharp quality to the light that, that I haven't seen anywhere else. It's, uh, everything looked sharper and more defined. And so it was a, I'd say it was to me a rare beauty that I've never seen before. I've never seen a total eclipse uh, like that before in person. And pictures just do not do it justice. I tried to take it, take a picture with my phone camera. No, <laughs> not at all, nothing like it, even though it's supposed to be a very good camera, but uh, uh, it just was, uh, could not get the light right. So it looked like a disc of light instead of a ring of light around a dark uh, globe. So yes, I would say it was a spiritual experience in a way, there are many experiences one can have out in God's creation that invoke a sense of awe and wonder at the complexity and yet also the simplicity of all the workings of the universe. Why do, and the, the question arises, why do we call it beauty? Uh, why do we call some things beautiful and other things ugly? Mathematicians tell us that there are certain trigonometric formulae that describe curved lines and perfect proportions that people in every culture call beautiful. It strikes all human beings the same way as beautiful. Uh, symmetry uh, is beautiful in every culture. Much of what we call beautiful, according to those who study such things, evokes images of bounty, of abundance, of prosperity, and therefore those things that give people hope uh, for a good future. But sometimes we can come also to see immense beauty in those things that speak of profound sorrow and loss. There can be beauty in that. So I think in particular, of Michelangelo's famous statue, the Pieta, which is the depiction of the Blessed Virgin Mary holding in her arms her crucified son after the crucifixion. If you associate beauty with sorrow and loss of hope, then there is hardly any better depiction of it than the Pieta. And yet it is beautiful. I've been to Rome and I've seen it, and it is, it is definitely a, a beautiful depiction. After the crucifixion, the disciples had largely given up hope 
and hope is what people need to live. Uh, in, our, in our gospel reading this morning, we, uh, there are the words, while, they were, uh, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. So at this point, that early point, it was like, it was, this is too good to be true. Maybe pinch me, maybe I'm dreaming. This is, this is too good to be, this is what we wanted to happen, but it can't be happening. So they were still at that point disbelieving. And it is only after the repeated, the repeated appearances of the risen Lord that they come to understand. Uh, and Jesus teaches them what the scriptures had been saying all along. They come to understand this gradually. What must, what must be, what must happen. So in the gospel, we hear today of how the risen Jesus appeared to the disciples in the evening in the midst of their gloom and despair. At first they, were, they feared they were seeing a ghost. And you would too. Because they had seen him die. They had seen the nails go into his hands and feet. They saw the Roman soldier pierce him with a spear at the end. And they saw the blood and the water come out. So he says to them, Knowing their fear and their doubt and their despair, he encouraged them, saying, Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And then Jesus brought things down to earth even further by saying, Have you anything here to eat? Kind of like saying, Well, anything to eat around here? If you can imagine him saying that in a kind of a casual way, just to bring things down to earth. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish. They did have something to eat. The very practical aspect of what we do in the body requires food. And Jesus reminds them of their role in providing hospitality to the guest. That was part of what they were supposed to be doing. In the Middle East, hospitality is tremendously important. Uh, and so part of what he's doing is reminding them that, oh, oh yeah, you have a guest here. Uh, it would be good to offer the person food. And so he was always preparing his disciples for their role in providing hospitality. But another reason for asking for something to eat can just as easily be that he wanted to show them proof that he was not, in fact, just a ghost or just some kind of immaterial spirit or some figment of their imagination. There is something about the physicality of eating some food that reminds people, everyone really, that we are here and now in this world and is not just some kind of ethereal spirit thing. It is part of Jesus' grace. And grace, to remember, is uh, unmerited favor his favor that he gives to his believers, grace being unmerited favor, a blessing you receive that you did nothing to buy or to deserve it. Jesus offers proof here, and he doesn't feel the need to give them anything like the words he said to Thomas a week later when he said to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Mind you, this passage in Luke's gospel happened chronologically before the Thomas passage, which we heard last week. Don't ask me to explain why it is our lectionary has Thomas in the second week of Easter and this passage in the third. Chronologically, it should be the other way around. Don't ask me because I didn't write the lectionary. <laughs> I'm sure there have been many people who have written to church headquarters saying, why is this? Well, shouldn't we correct it? It's chronologically out of order. Anyways, we'll leave that for others to debate. Jesus spoke, as he did in both times, to give us a basis of hope. And in grounding our hope in real happenings in the real world, we can increase our hope and find out that our faith 
has grown as a result as well, without even looking at it grow, as it were, in the same way that a plant grows overnight, without us looking at it, without us doing anything to make the plant grow. It will grow overnight. The same way, Jesus will also increase our faith without our even trying to work it up. Faith is not something that you try to work up. In this way, and for this reason, our epistle passage in 1 John this morning tells us, all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. It is the maintenance of hope that indeed purifies. Not that we try to work up some artificially produced purity. That's impossible. But even if it were possible, then we, if it were possible, we'd be in even greater danger of pride, which goes before a fall. In fact, we would not be pure at all if we were full of pride in our self-imagined purity. Instead, the natural way of living in Christ with prayer and meditation on God's word and thinking of those things that are good and pure and healthful, those things that are life-giving, thinking of those things produces naturally the purity that God wanted for us to live in when God created us. Not a purity of things avoided, but a purity that comes from a life lived in what is life-giving to others. It is not conjured up. It is not worked up by intensity or by shouting a lot or by crying a lot, uh, although those things may happen, but they do not in themselves necessarily produce more faith or purity. It is a quiet work, a work of God, a work that only God can do. God can create the sort of desire in the heart of a person to live in ways that are life-giving, both to themselves and to all the other people who they come into contact with every day all around them. In this way, many thousands of people have found that they were enabled to overcome addictions and self-defeating behaviors of all kinds and to walk in a path that is more life-giving to both themselves and to others. Sometimes they have had their own bravery astonish themselves, doing things that you didn't know you were that brave to do. The result is a life that becomes worth living. May we look to see evidences of this hope and it's good fruit every day in the coming week. Amen. Service continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 188. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people. For prayers of the people, we'll be using litany number 15, found on page 122. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. In a world cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Anatoria, New Zealand, and Polynesia, the priest in charge and people. In our diocese, we pray for, the, for Bishop William Cliff for his leadership, Ian, our priest, for his guidance. We also pray for the Church of St. Mark's Berryfield, the Reverend Sandra Hounsel Drover, and people. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel, let us pray to the Lord. That he may grant us humility to the subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, let us pray to the Lord. That by power, power, wars, and famine may cease through all the earth, let us pray to the Lord. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, and that they may be comforted and strengthened. We'd like to pray for the healing of those in our parish and those known to us as we name them. Ann Jackson, Ken Harris, Elizabeth Weir, Sheldon Graham, Ian and Marine Thompson, Amanda Pauls, Bernadette O'Gara, Rabin O'Gara, Cynthia and Stanley Graham, Brian Weiss, Kathy Pauls, Jay Barents, Ginny Graydon, Debbie Harton, Kathy Brown, Megan Goodwin and family, Jim and Patty Young, Tony Shapira, Chris Smith, Margaret Shent Shenton, Margaret Kinney, Kathy Spruill, Robert, Tony, Jacques Legault, Bill Nassu, Emerson, Beverly Reed, at this time, for those that uh, you that are not on the list that you want to add, say it in silence or out loud as you so wish. Let us pray to the Lord. And we may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. A prayer for Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine in the Middle East today, those injured, hungry, and homeless grieving the death of family and friends, including those who have died and those who suffer from a dev devastating results of war. We pray for peace and for the laying down of weapons. 
We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort could draw them to them. We pray for those with power over peace and war, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you could hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Service continues on page 191, Confession and Absolution. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet your neighbor with a sign of God's peace. Our hymn is hymn number 84, Lord, enthroned in heavenly splendor. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 5.
we pray over the gifts. Creator of all, you wash away our sins in water. water. You give, you us, give us, birth us birth by, birth the, by the, Spirit. the Spirit and redeem us in, in the blood of Christ. As, as we celebrate the resurrection, resurrection renew your gift of life within us. We ask this, this in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ the, risen the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic prayer number two is on page 196. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature and lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our the Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The breaking of the bread, number eight, for Easter season. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now, now we are raised to new life. life. We were buried in your tomb. 
now we share in your resurrection. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You will find the prayer after communion on page 338.
author of life yeah. divine. In, in the breaking, breaking of bread, bread we know the risen Lord. Feed us Feed always us in these mysteries, that we may show your glory to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The doxology on page 214. The glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The announcements. I'm here to talk about the thermostat and the heat. I was talking to someone from ECM here on Wednesday with me. First picture this, three or four techie men trying to figure out why this screen won't work. And a 10-year-old says, what's this plug to? We had egg on our face. Because basically, somebody caused Saturday, uh, Sunday, Saturday and Sunday to have no programming. So essentially, it was off for, for Saturday, Sunday. That's why during the week when we came, Bill came, it was at 14 where it should have been, Monday to Friday. Um, and so we reset the programming. And hopefully, unless you really, really have to change anything there, if you're here midweek, say Jim or Ian have to be in here midweek sometime, um, and it's not warm enough, the only thing they should do is push the temperature up a little bit. And then, and then when you leave, I'll put a big sign on the door up there too, hit um, cancel hold. Otherwise, that little, I want it a little warmer, will hold the rest of the week up at that high level when we don't want it to. But that's only for midweek use in an emergency, yada, yada. So hopefully, we uh, try to avoid putting our hands to the, unless it's really, really necessary. And my suggestion is almost, let's wait till Sunday and have at least two people looking at it at the same time who are interested in such things. If you're not, then keep away from it completely. <laughs> I'll put a sign up. So it was basically our fault. And um, the guy was very understanding. He said, oh, these things happen. But when you go to view what your programming is, um, if you push Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all Monday to Friday will light up with five check marks. If you push Saturday, there was no check mark. Push Sunday, there was no check mark, meaning nothing was programmed. It was like telling the thing, stay off. <coughs> We don't need you Saturday and Sunday. So that's been corrected, and hopefully it'll stay corrected. We had nice heat today, did we not? Yes. OK. So were they saying that something had happened to change the program? Well, it, it doesn't. They canceled. The, somebody inadvertently canceled any programming for Saturday and Sunday. It doesn't just turn itself off. It yeah. had to have been someone who's done it. So it's not that some, some electrical circuit was fried. No. Okay. Well, everything's working fine. Well, as long as we know that, that's helpful. In other words, it's human error. Yes. Pilot error. <laughs> okay. Yes, Valerie. I have a praise item. <laughs> um, at the annual meeting last week, Rochelle was telling you about the um, 
she just mentioned it briefly, that we are applying for, we have applied for a grant for the community garden to expand the community garden. And one of the things on our wish list was a greenhouse. And this week, we had a greenhouse built on site, free of charge, donated. It's up and it's, it is awesome. Um, it was donated by, oh dear, now I've forgotten the name, Enterprise Community Hall and something committee. Events? No, it wasn't charity events, it was something committee. Anyway, there were a, time. yes, there were a lot of men there putting up this new greenhouse, so. Brand new. Pardon? Brand new. Um, the, f the metal frame um, is not brand new but it has been attached to a wooden frame that is brand new and the wood for that wooden frame was also donated. So, yeah, so we're very grateful. So now we can, we can, uh, we can concentrate on the beds. Praise the Lord. That's beautiful and wonderful to see how that has been coming together so quickly. Uh, and so easily, uh, this must be from God. <laughs> our final hymn is hymn number 377, to the name of our Savior, Salvation. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 5. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.